we have three forces acting on an object and then we're trying to find out the resultant of those three forces. So what we can do is we can work out the components of the 50 Newton force in the vertical and horizontal directions, find out what the overall vertical and horizontal forces are on this object, and then use Pythagoras' theorem to work out the resultant. So what I'd start by doing is drawing a line down. This angle must be 30 degrees, as we know that this here must be 90. So 120 minus 90 is 30. And then we can use Sokotoa. So if I redraw that same force on the right hand side, so here's the 50 Newton force, here's the angle 30 degrees. Using Sokotoa, I know that this will end up being 15 cos 30, and this will end up being 15 sine 30. And as our force is going towards the bottom left, this must be a downwards component, and this must be a component towards the left. If you're not entirely sure how that works, orange is our start point, and then purple is our end point for our force of 15 newtons. These two components should flow from the start to the finish. And these two things are equal to 12.99 and 7.5. So then we can work out what the overall vertical force is. We have five newtons upwards, and now we've figured out from this triangle here that the overall downwards force is 12.99. So if we take the two things away, we find out that we have 7.99 newtons of force acting downwards, so that's the overall downwards force. And then horizontally, we have 12 newtons towards the right, and we have 7.5 newtons towards the left, so take them away. That's 4.5 newtons. That will be the overall force towards the right. 12 newtons is bigger than the 7.5 towards the left, so therefore the resultant force horizontally is towards the right. So we can draw these two forces on a force diagram. So we have the 7.99 Newton force acting downwards and the 4.5 force acting towards the right. The resultant connects the start to the finish. And then we just need to do Pythagoras to work out what that resultant would be. So that would end up being 9.17. So about 9.2 Newtons would be our resultant force. Then we want to work out the angle that the resultant force makes with the 5 Newton force. So the 5 Newton force is a vertical force, so that's going in this direction. So then we want to work out the angle between that force and this force, so that would be this angle here. So to work that angle out, we have to work out what this angle here is, and we can do that by using tan of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, or any Sokotoa rule would have worked. Rearrange for theta and we end up with 29.38, or 29.4 degrees. So that's theta, and then if we do 180 minus that, we end up with 151 degrees. So that would be our angle that we have here. So part A, the answer would be 9.2. Part B, the answer would be 151 degrees. And then finally, for part C, state with full justification the least and greatest magnitudes of the resultant force. Okay, so to find the resultant force, we have to, let's say this is our start point, we have to draw all of the forces from head to tail. Now it's saying in this part that the direction in which these forces act can be changed. So I'm just going to give the three forces some random directions. So this is 5, this is 12, let's say we then have 15 is here. So these are our three forces, the resultant connects the start to the finish. So in this case, our resultant would be this, whatever that length is. And that will depend on the angles that we have here. So then we want to think about what is the largest that we can have if we were to rotate these forces, but have them all connected like we see here, how can we make this orange line as big as possible? Well, that will simply be when the three vectors, the 5 Newton, the 12 Newton, and the 15 Newton, are connected in a straight line. So we have 5 newtons, straight after that we have the 12 newtons, and straight after that we have the 15 newtons. And in that case, the resultant would just be the addition of these three numbers, which would be 32 newtons. So the maximum force would be 32. So what about the minimum? 
Well, remember that the resultant is this orange line that connects the start to our finish. We want to make this as short as possible. So can we bring, by altering the angles of these three forces, can we bring this point all the way up to point S, or how close can we get it to point S? Well, probably the easiest way to think about this is to consider this longest side of 15. So let's just consider a triangle. We have one length, our base of this triangle, being 15. So if we have two other sides, let's put them on top. We know that because this length here is 15, these two lengths added up, because we have taken a longer path, they must be bigger than 15 overall. So if this is A and B, then that would mean that A plus B has to be bigger than 15. Because 15 is the shortest length to get from this point to this point, A plus B must be longer. And A plus B can get as big as we want it to be. So if we were to, for instance, make these two sides really big, well, the addition of these two sides will be still be bigger than 15, considerably bigger than 15 in this case, but that's the only condition. The summation of those two sides have to be bigger than 15. Well, if we consider the two other forces that we have in this scenario, the 12 newtons and the 15 newtons, 12 and 5 are two lengths that when you add them up, give you 17, that is bigger than 15. Therefore, this is a possible triangle that we can have. That's relevant because we can therefore bring this point all the way down to here. So that could look something like this. It could be the case that we have, here is our start point. We have 15 newtons going towards the right. And then we have, let's say, 5 newtons going this way. And then we have 12 newtons going directly back to the start. And this is a valid triangle. This triangle can exist. Now, in this case, the start point and the finish point are in the same exact spot. The resultant force will therefore be zero. The distance from the start to the finish would be zero. So then our resultant force would be zero, and therefore f min is zero.